In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen. When we receive a gift from someone, there is, of course, a general custom by which we thank the person. Through showing appreciation, we recognize that gift's value. And through gratitude, we show that we are pleased that it was given. And hence, we esteem both the gift and the kindness of the giver. On the other hand, if someone does not say thank you, we will tend to take it as a sign of lack of social breeding, that they are not pleased with a gift, or at the very least, don't appreciate it. In light of this, we should never forget that everything we have, and indeed our very lives, are a gift from God. God created the universe and all that is in it, and every moment he continues to keep it in existence. He provides us with food, shelter, clothing, all the practical necessities of life. And above and beyond that, he gives us many other good material things which make life bearable as we journey through. And even more importantly, there are those many spiritual gifts he gives us, not least faith and grace, which if we cooperate with them, will lead us to eternal happiness with him in heaven. God does not owe us or any of his creatures anything in justice. It is entirely within his prerogative that he created us and gives us all these good things. He does not have to, and indeed there would be no injustice on his part if he withheld them. While he has called us to be his adopted sons and daughters through grace, None of us, nonetheless, we are in a certain sense his property, for we are his creatures. And therefore nothing he gives us is out of obligation, but purely because he loves us. One cannot help wonder then at the paradox between the many good things he gives us in this our own time, and then on the other hand, the sinfulness, impenitence, and ingratitude of the current age. Those of us who are in our 40s or older will easily be able to recognize and compare how much more comfortable and advanced life is now compared even to the 1970s or 80s. Just think of the sophisticated ranges of food now available on supermarket shelves, the many technical, technological marvels we lived without back then, the internet, mobile phones, and then, of course, the advantages in medical science and the relative ease and affordability of international travel. There's no doubt about it when we consider the lifestyle of most of us in the West. We have to acknowledge that God's providence to us on a material level is unequaled. Yet he graciously gives while we become increasingly undeserving. Society at large has come even, become even more godless attacking and marginalizing those who follow him, while we ourselves, his, t his children, take his gifts for granted and then add insult to injury come by committing sin. When we reflect on these realities, we begin to realize how patient and loving he is and how ungrateful and ungracious we are. Today's gospel is an expression of precisely this ingratitude which has crept into the human heart since the fall. But if we look carefully at what happened in that healing miracle, we will notice that the, the one who returns to Christ receives another greater gift, this time of a spiritual nature, for he is told, Arise and go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Our Lord shows that he treats us precisely the way that we, we, we treat other people because just as we are more inclined to be more generous to those who have already shown appreciation for gifts we've given, in the same way, if we are truly appreciative of what God has given us, God will bestow more on us on that deeper spiritual level. For of course, the spiritual realm is a far higher, of a higher order than the material. Our gratitude to God must extend to everything. 
its primary expression finds its proper place in prayer. Whenever we pray, we ought always to take a little time to thank God for what he's given us. One place this is particularly emphasized is at the holy sacrifice of Lamas. The Greek word used for Lamas is Eucharistia, which is translated into English as Eucharist, a word meaning thanksgiving. For the Mass, the summit of the public cult of worship of Almighty God, is indeed the sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's for this reason that one of the precepts of a church is to keep holy the Lord's Day, and for that matter, holy days of obligation through participating in the solemn rite of praise and thanksgiving to our Creator. Let's consider our, our attitude to this duty. Is it something we take seriously? Do we fulfill our obligation in a spirit of love and devotion? Or are we likely to make excuses such as busyness, visitors or recreation to absent ourselves? Do we turn up to Mass in a good time? Or are we often late? What does our timekeeping say about our commitment and spirit of thanksgiving? If by analogy we exhibited the same attitude towards social engagements to which we were invited by friends or family members, would they feel our love and gratitude or be left wondering why they bothered? How do we dress particularly on Sundays and holy days? There's a reason why the term Sunday best used to be a regular phrase in the social vocabulary of this country. Social norms regarding what constitutes smart dress have changed over the years. But we can still ask ourselves, would we be comfortable wearing our Sunday mass clothes, whatever they are, at a significant social event? Of course, a particularly important reason for being thankful at mass is because there we receive a priceless gift, namely the Panis Angelicus, the bread of angels, our Lord himself in Holy Communion. Do we prepare ourselves remotely by going to confession regularly, and more immediately by stirring out up sentiments of love and devotion as we approach the communion rail? What about our thanksgiving after communion? As we walk back to our pew afterwards, do we do so with hearts filled with grateful love to pray devotional prayers of thanksgiving? Holy Communion is a most precious gift indeed, which is one of the reasons why receiving it unworthily is so heinous. It's important to inculcate a regular practice of counting our blessings outside of Mass throughout the day through little prayerful aspirations. Also, grace before meals, the prayer of thanksgiving afterwards are important, well-established practices, which remind us that the food we eat is, is courtesy of him, as are all the other benefits we receive. But also, while we are encouraged to make an examination of conscience at the end of each day, looking back over it to identify where we've fallen into sins and bad habits, we can also use that same exercise to identify God's graces, gifts, and blessings we've received. And so to conclude, we should always be grateful to God for everything. Our families, friends, homes, the food on the table, and also the personal virtues and strengths with which he's blessed each of us. But we should be particularly grateful for the priceless gift of faith and the sacraments. Just imagine how unbearable the, the problems of life and our personal mortality would be without these things. Not to give him thanks is a sign of spiritual ill-breeding and bad manners. Finally, let's not forget that we should also thank Our Lady and our patron saints for the gift of their intercession on our behalf. For they, like God, have a special love for those who are grateful. May God indeed bless you and Our Lady keep you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.